Welcome back to the final five, joined tonight by the congresswoman from Virginia's 7th Congressional District, Abigail Spanberger, up late with me tonight on the final five. Always appreciate you taking some time out. I know it's it's been an eventful week. It has. It has. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you again. So let, let's talk, first of all, about the debt ceiling, because this is something that clearly we knew we were going to get to this point where Congress was going to have to do something. Uh, President Biden told Republicans, come up with a plan here. McCarthy put together a plan. It would seem touch and go if he would get the support. He got the support, albeit barely here. Uh, so where does it go from here? It doesn't look like the Senate's going to take this up, or at least, or will they? Uh, it's not expected that the Senate will will take this up, and we knew that going into the vote. Um, because while um, while putting forth ideas and proposals, what Speaker McCarthy put forth is indeed um, a, a proposal that would make six significant cuts, 22 percent cuts across the board, which would be devastating to Virginia's families, our seniors, our veterans. Uh, and certainly recognizing that when you're making 22 percent cuts across the board on things other than defense spending, you know, that is services to veteran, that's meals on wheels, that is deployment of regular function of government that would be impacted. So we know that this bill uh, has no path in the Senate. And uh, the, the reality is that we cannot allow the United States to default. We absolutely must pay our bills. Um, every time we have faced the circumstance in the past, we have taken action under the prior administration, under the Trump administration. Uh, my colleagues, I was there for one of the votes, my colleagues voted three times under the last administration uh, to ensure that we were paying our debts. This should be absolutely no different. The gamesmanship right now is dangerous to the U.S. and the global economy. President Biden said as much, pointing out that this was done during the Bush era, during the Trump era as well. But do you think that he made when he publicly said, I will not negotiate on this? Do you think that that was the, the, the thing to say when it came to getting to this point here? You know, I'll say that what I think the correct thing is to say paying bills for dollars already spent is one conversation. Related to it, of course, is the conversation about the dollars that we are going to spend in the future. And the reality is for anybody who you know has spent any time on Capitol Hill or knows sort of the basic function of Congress, the how we spend our money is done through the budgeting and the appropriations process. And I think that it is absolutely appropriate for the president, for members of the House, for members of the Senate to have negotiations about what we are spending our money on in the future, 100%. Yeah. That happens in the budget and the appropriations process. We should not be holding hostage whether or not we're actually going to pay our bills. We've, we've come to points where we're talking about when, if it's government spending the bills to fund the government, where we get almost invariably every time down to the last hours. And there are a lot of people out there who are watching this, who work for the government, who are, who are considered mm -hmm. to be non-essential employees, who are worried about their jobs. Clearly, we're looking at something different when it comes to the debt ceiling here. But there's a lot of people out there who are watching this. And, and we have the back and forth. But there are real people who are stuck between this. And if, right. you, if you default, if you're looking for a house, if you're looking for a car, it's those viewers out there, those people that are caught in the middle. And Jim, you're exactly right. So when we're talking about the, you know, when there's a, a, a government shutdown and that impacts government employees, that impacts contractors who do work for the government, uh, et cetera, what we're talking about in a default is far more catastrophic than the catastrophe we face during the times of a government shutdown. It is not only the impact on federal employees and contractors, and frankly, Virginia's economy, it is also the impact on the entirety of our nation. Moody's has estimated that if we were de to default, it would trigger a loss of 7 million jobs, it would push the unemployment rate above 8%, and it would reduce America's real GDP by almost 4%.